the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. There are different dimensions to life. We often think about three dimensions. That would be the depth, the width, and the height. Einstein made it scientific history by recognizing that we actually live in four dimensions. He added time to the mix. But beyond that, there really are ten dimensions. We only experience the four, but there are more dimensions to reality than meets the eye. A guy named Maimonides determined that by studying the Hebrew text. He came to that conclusion back in the 13th century. From studying the text in Genesis, we can conclude that our universe has 10 dimensions, although only four are known that we have the ability to understand. The other six dimensions are inferred mathematically and have been proven. The interesting thing is that Today, science is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on atomic accelerators, and they're discovering something that this 13th century philosopher understood just by studying Genesis. Through all of these advances in the scientific community, there has developed an awareness that there is more than just the four dimensions that we directly experience. When we look at Genesis 3, what we see is that because of the fall of man, creation was then made subject to the bondage of decay, and all the laws of entropy uh, would apply. And somehow, this got tied to God's curse, so that what we know about the various dimensions is everything that was before the curse. When God placed a curse on everything, everything was pulled apart so that we couldn't really understand or regard any other dimensions other than the four that we experience currently. That would include things like the domain of angels, paranormal behavior, the spiritual realm as the Bible often talks about. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit, like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like a torment of scorpions when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for a battle. On their head was a crown, something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots and many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and they were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek has the name Apollo. 
Apollyon. I want to tell you about a place that is in Switzerland. It's called CERN. You may or may not have heard of this, but what CERN does is uses particles and accelerates them to a very high velocity and then collides them together. Right at this very moment, there is a new ramp up at CERN and the original intention of CERN was to find what is known as the God Particle. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well what does that have to do with the Bible? What does that have to do with me as a Christian? I'm not an expert on this subject. I don't know a whole lot about uh, physics and um, I'm not going to even pretend to be able to know that much about what is going on out there at CERN. If I did, you'd see how really foolish I would look. I just want to be able to uh, know enough and be able to break this down enough for you to be able to make some type of application. Now, what might be one of the greatest minds up there in the level of Einstein uh, would be Stephen Hawking. Uh, you may have not known that uh, he had passed away, but before he died, he really wanted the world to know that the ultimate reality of the entire planet could be in very grave danger. He warned that what they're doing in CERN right now has the potential to destroy the entire universe. Now, this is coming from a theoretical physicist uh, that is up there on the level of Einstein. What they're attempting to do is to recreate the Big Bang in a man-made structure. And for many scientists, this is very frightening. So there's plenty of physicists, and you can look it up, that don't agree with what they're doing out at CERN in Switzerland. Let me explain to you exactly what CERN is. It's a 17 mile long accelerator buried 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. And it's right there in the area where France and Switzerland come together. So part of the accelerator is located in France and part of the accelerator is located in Switzerland. A joint European project with the United States of America as an observer. But all the brain power that's going into the experiment is really coming from Europe. And what they're attempting to recreate is what they believe that happened to bring the entire universe into existence. For us as Christians, we've got no doubts about uh, the book of Genesis. We recognize that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That he spoke all things into existence. But now with all this science going on, what's happening is they're beginning to discover things that they never expected. They're finding things that go deeper and deeper into alternative dimensions. And as the experiment develops, what's happening is they're finding out that there's a lot more to creation than they had ever thought. What they're seeing and what they're finding out is that there is something going on that really boggles the human mind. It literally would just blow your mind apart trying to comprehend it. What's happening in this 17 mile long underground tube? We're talking about neutrinos, and these neutrinos are very small subatomic particles that are very difficult to detect. Not only that, but I mean, you could have millions of neutrinos passing through your body at this very moment. Those neutrinos are part of what 
originated from maybe the stars or the actual creative moment. In my mind, I'm seeing a resonance from God's Word speaking creation into existence as being carried by neutrinos and actually providing an echo. Now, when I start talking about stuff like that, then we're starting to see that the power of God in creation, and not just for goodness, but that that power also had been harnessed for what we call as evil. This even includes uh, the creation of black holes. And now we're starting to say that what are they doing to open up portals to other dimensions? Now, here's the crazy part. As they're doing these experiments, all kinds of strange things begin to happen. I mean, we're talking about paranormal activity. They're calling them ghosts, but we know what they are. They're demonic spirits, and they're being manifested in ways that are shocking. What's really interesting is that if you go down to CERN in front of their headquarters, uh, they've got a big statue of Shiva, a Hindu god. God of destruction. Now, where the teaching of Shiva goes is that Shiva doesn't destroy for the purpose of annihilation. Shiva destroys so that the god Brahma can come and recreate. So what they're doing at CERN is they're destroying particles for the purpose of recreating. So you have all these big fat heads gathered together at CERN. Now here's an interesting thing, and that, that when Darwin came out with his theory of evolution, it was pretty well known that what it would do is destroy the very foundations of Christianity. And now they're still saying that, oh, the Bible's outdated and it, it is no longer relevant. But now, with CERN in action, we've got some of the very greatest scientists in the entire world, and they're becoming religious. They are definitely connected with Shiva as they find out these things. What they're seeing are demonic aberrations, and they weren't expecting any of this. It didn't fit any of their models. They didn't know what to make of it. So what's happening is that they're having a hard time understanding the fact there is a spiritual world out there. That that spiritual world was created by a spiritual being, an almighty, eternal, and absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting. A God who put in me what I am today by the power of a new birth. But the scientists, they're not going to admit that because what that will do is take power out of their control. They won't be able to demonstrate the theory any longer or be able to put it into motion. It's like Stephen Hawking warned them. They're about to open Pandora's box. And here's the thing. Once you open the box, you can't put back in what comes out. What they're doing is they're trying to destroy these particles and then bring them back to their original state. You see what's really going on here? It's about moving through time. They're trying to learn what matter was like before it came into its present form. They're looking for what holds everything together. As Christians, we know our Bibles, and we know what holds everything together, and that is the Spirit of God. It's the word of His power. It's a very spiritual thing. You can't put a word under a microscope. We know who sealed us. That's the Holy Spirit. It's the word. We, when we pray, we understand that God is there, and that it's a very spiritual moment. We read God's word and we know 
that it is his spirit. We would never deny the reality of God's spirit because we're saved. So with all their accomplishments at CERN, what have they gotten out of it? Well, I'll tell you something. It's anti-matter. One of the beliefs is that with antimatter, one of the characteristics is that there is a corresponding matter to it. So you have a matter and an antimatter. That there's a connection between the two. We know that it, things like tables and objects are made up of atoms, but we also know that they're arranged in a particular order to make them matter. Now, when we understand what matter is, we also understand that we can act upon it. Uh, it you can throw it and put it into motion. Uh, it actually, matter can burn. If it was a piece of wood, for example, you could light it on fire. But when we look at antimatter, it's very unstable. And it doesn't need to be acted upon at all. It just burns anyway, unless you do something to contain it. It's extremely volatile and very uncertain. So with the project that they're doing there at CERN, what they're generating is antimatter. Now, to give you an idea of how powerful one grain of antimatter is equivalent to four atomic bombs, such as the ones that they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. When you, you look into it, you'll find out that it was like 8 to 13 grams of matter inside those bombs to cause an explosion that was the equivalent of, what, 16,000 tons of TNT? We're talking like... But now, we have to understand that one grain of antimatter is the equivalent of four grams of matter. Now this is a little bit of a math problem here. But I want you to understand that what they're doing out there in CERN is they're producing anti-matter. And it takes them a while to gather enough anti-matter to make a pound. And I'm not sure what a grain of antimatter actually weighs. But the technology that they're using in CERN can produce antimatter at a much quicker rate. Now, when they produce this stuff, strange things happen. Take, for instance, they took some of this antimatter and they uh, took it to a college. And they don't tell us the name of the college because they had the facilities to contain the antimatter. But people started hallucinating out there. Strange things were happening. All kinds of crazy stuff was going on. People were going wild. They were having visions. So it's not hard to understand that there's definitely a connection between this antimatter and the spiritual world. But now the Bible does tell us uh, that God's going to put some limitations on what these people are actually doing. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. But even though he's not going to let them go any further, I'll tell you what, uh, the spirit world is not affected by the physical world. The demons, they're not really worried about matter, antimatter. Uh, they're spirits, and they're in it to deceive the world. They're drawing them into a deception. They're drawing the science into the great deception. A, a great deception that has never been known before. I'll tell you what, it's going to make true believers out of some of these scientists because what they're dealing with is spiritual beings and they're drawing them out. And you see how they've planned this because, you know, way back in 2020, 
NASA was already announcing that they were going to be in contact with aliens. And these are the scientists, and they're saying, oh, the Bible is no longer useful, it's archaic, it's not part of what we need in our world today. They're going, oh, but we're too smart for the Bible, we're scientists. And they're saying that they're going to be in contact with aliens. The thing is, what they think are aliens that are out there are really demons. We got to remember that, man, these UFOs, these flying saucers and all these aliens, it's all demonic in origin. It's real, but it's not like we understand what reality is because it's this manifestation of a demonic spiritual realm. This whole scientific analysis and all of their experimentation, it truly is demonic it's the greatest deception outside of diseases and the corporate powers that are money hungry that anyone could believe in they have their heart and soul tied up in all of this and you know they know that it's a, a spiritual because why else would they put out this statue of shiva and preach on this strange destroying and bringing in a new creation and they're supposed to be the smartest and the most brilliant men in the world but now they know there's something more to all of their equipment and their scientific analysis because it's something that's supernatural You know, going back to what Hawking said, and remember now, he's an atheist. He didn't believe in spirits. And what he believes that they're really doing there in CERN, Switzerland, is to unleash the gates of hell. When we started out, we started out in Revelations in chapter 9. But remember that in Revelation chapter 4, we have the gate of heaven. And as we go through Revelation chapter 9, what we're having here is the gate of hell. Saul went to the witch of Endor. She said that, oh, I saw old men. I saw spirits coming up out of the earth. What did she see? She saw demons. Then God brought Samuel back himself personally the real Samuel, who appeared before Saul and the witch of Endor. So the deception is that they would use their science and technology and suck everyone into accepting the idea that there's a spirit being coming from somewhere up here, some alien coming down to Earth or through a wormhole or a time continuum. And they're going to do it through the Hydron Collider. It's the highest technology available to men. Now, here's the thing. The antimatter that we've been talking about is also called dark matter. The energy that's attached to this can affect people. When you produce antimatter, you have to contain it. In fact, that's the biggest problem. It's containing it because what happens is if you don't contain it it just goes wild it goes everywhere at that point they don't know what it's going to do but they do know that if you don't contain it it'll affect people it could cause some people to go screaming mad it controls people it's an enormously powerful thing it's pulling something out of hell that we don't want anything to do with. And the thing about it is that they're turning it loose on mankind right now. You look at what's going on in the world today, a burning man, and they're pumped up by these raves, and they have attitudes of only about me, myself, and I. And to them, it's just a big joke. Just a joke. That's all it is to them. It's a, a crowd mentality. You got people 
that are so easily moved emotionally, but not intellectually. Emotionally, they're stirred up. And that's just the way this mob mentality goes. There's so much power going on at, at CERN, it can actually create earthquakes. It's making these ghost-like images appear. Scientists are warning, don't do it, because you're going to unleash something that you're not going to be able to deal with. These scientists, they're unaware of even a greater purpose that maybe it's Satan that is manipulating things to his advantage. There's no doubt he wants to bring chaos to the earth. I think it only tells us just really how close we are to the second coming of our Lord and Savior. But I think the church is asleep. The warning is really for them. You know, I, I'm a little older now and I ain't got so much further to go, but I'm going to tell you something. You can, you young people that are coming up, you want to start a family and you want to have you've got your whole entire life in front of you by the grace of God. Then to think about how one gram of antimatter has the potential of four nuclear bombs. Well, you know what? I hate to break it to you, but I'm going to have to tell you, with all my heart, I believe that all the peace and the prosperity and joy, as far as the world's concern that we've enjoyed, we're enjoying because of the grace of God. Because I don't think things are going to get any better. You know, even before the war began in Ukraine, the war was already on. It's the, the war begins not with the physical shooting, but it begins when ideas begin to clash. And there are those powers behind these ideas that want to be the stronger and more forceful and Watch out when they say this is for your good. Watch out. Now here's the part that really brings all of this together. We read in Revelation chapter 9 and notice in verse 11 it says, They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek he is called Apollyon. What I did is I looked up Apollyon, and if you want to locate, there was an actual place uh, on a geographical location where you can find Apollyon. You look it up, and guess where that is located? Today, the Apollyon, or the place where Satan lives, is located in Geneva, Switzerland located right over CERN, the place where Satan lives. This science and spirituality, oh, they got what they want. But we know the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord, come. Come, Lord, come. 